very young, uh, 19 years old, <laughs> equally courageous woman. Um, <laughs> who has survived exclusively because she was surrounded by some cora other courageous people, especially her parents. Her father can't be here today. And uh, they had, by chance, uh, came in contact with Peter Duisberg. Those of you who watched the film House of Numbers yesterday know a little bit their story, and Lindsay will share her story with us. Thank you. I was adopted from Romania in 1990, and my mom and my grandma went to Romania to come and get me. So they had spent two months over there to deal with all the adoption and everything. And then I had, in order to come into the United States, I had to get tested for HIV. In Romania, I tested negative, so then everything was fine. I went. I went, we, stayed, we went to the United States, and then in three months of being in the United States, I had to get tested again, and I was tested positive in the United States. So that's when we started to take the AZT drugs right from the second that we found out. And in, in the early 90s, you know, um, they just they just gave you mega doses of these drugs, thinking that they were doing things to save her life. And really, Lindsay had no compromised lab results. She was not abnormal in any way. So it was kind of it was a, uh, not a uh, it wasn't a common sense thing to give a, a baby who wasn't sick drugs. So um, in about it, after Lindsay had taken the drugs for about um, almost two years. Um, my dad read an article in a magazine, and it talked about Peter Duisberg, and it was written by Tom Bethel, and it was, Peter Duisberg was just saying that he didn't believe HIV caused AIDS, and my dad thought I should read this article. He said, you know what, you might have gone through all this stuff for nothing. So I read the article, and I thought, you know, my dad is just really trying to make this all disappear, just like in the movie. I said, just wash it away. And it's really kind of irritated me. I thought, what's wrong with this guy? Everybody knows HIV causes AIDS. So anyway, um, I reread the article, and later, like six weeks later, when Lindsay started experiencing, she was just this little girl, experiencing such leg cramps or leg pain that she would shriek out in the middle of the night, sometimes two or three times. And she doesn't remember that. That's why I'm up here, you know, telling you the story. But um, it was it was unbearable to the point where we wrote to Peter Duisberg after 40 days and nights of this horrible pain, and he wrote back immediately and said, "You must take your daughter off the AZT. That is why she's having the pain and all the problems." So um, we took her off. We never gave her another dose. I can remember. My husband was sitting there reading this letter, and I was looking over his shoulder, and we both looked at each other and we said, no more. That was the end. And within, within just a few days, Lindy's legs, um, the pain went away, and she started eating more right away, too. And she gained about 26% of her body weight within just two months' time. So then um, we never gave her any more drugs, but our, our doctor was like Carrie's, could hardly believe that we would take this drug away from her when her T cell counts were all normal. Why would we take her off drugs? And you know, I said, doctor, she's having these leg pains. She's not eating properly. She's not growing properly. And she said, well, that's all part of HIV infection. So um, we realized that we would need to find another doctor. So we got a different doctor right away. And um, well, we didn't right away because we, it was difficult to find one who would allow us not to give Lindsay AZT. So we finally called the Mayo Clinic because we're from Minnesota, and the Mayo Clinic is also in Minnesota. And um, we took Lindsay there, and our Dr. Henry said, I won't make you give her drugs yet, but 
you know, it's just going to be a matter of time, and then she'll have to go back on them. So um, we kind of weaned ourselves away from that doctor. And I just, I was just going to ask Lindsay a question or so here, um, just so to, to um, so she can. I know you want to hear from Lindsay um, about how old were you when you realized, or when we told you that you had HIV. I think I've always, I mean, you've always told me that I was very sick from the time, until I can start remembering things. So I've always known that I've had something. And then about in fifth grade is when in school they started talking about all the health and, you know, you're going to die from AIDS if you are promiscuous or whatever. And so then I knew and we, me and my mom and my dad, we all talked about it and it's always been very open in my family. So. And we've all, you've always known since you were very tiny who Peter Duisberg was. Yep. She just knew that he was the man who saved her life. Peter Duisberg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then when you went to school, um, you know, you were already in, in middle school by that time. Did you ever tell anyone about your diagnosis? Um, I never told anyone at school because it was, um, at that time, I could still be taken out of my home because I wasn't old enough to speak for myself. They would take me away from my parents. So we always kept it very, you know, quiet and... And it was a very real fear. Why was that? Why did you know that you could be taken from your home? Well, you've always told me, you know, this is and a big deal and... Yep, you're in the doctor threatened to take you yep. away. So even if Lindsay would have um, an ear infection or something, we always went to the emergency care, so they wouldn't ask all these questions and look it up on the computer. Um, so we would just kind of fly under the radar. And Lindsay did have ear infections and uh, normal sicknesses normal like anyone stuff. else would, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. going to school and everything. Yep. So then what happened this last about a year ago? So a year ago is when the movie House of Numbers came out, and that's when we started to travel with the movie. And um, I go to an alternative school now, and there is where I decided that I was going to tell my story to the teachers. And we, in one day, we had a, an educator come in to talk about um, sexual health, and so he was asking everyone about, you know, questions and. Uh, it was true and false, and then, of course, I get the question about HIV and AIDS, and so I know the real answer, or what he wants to hear, and so I tell him that, but I said, but I don't believe in this, because I don't believe HIV causes AIDS, and then he says, okay, that, you know, like, some people believe in that, so the next day, my actual teacher comes up to me and tells me that, you know, you're going to die from AIDS, and I like telling me why I'm wrong forever thinking that, but he never asked me even like, well, why would you think such a thing? So then I told him um, that this affects me personally, so I don't know where he can like get off telling me something that he knows nothing about, and this has been my life for 20 years. So I gave him the websites that um, one my dad has created, and then there's you know, quite a what, few what's, others. What's that website called? <laughs> it's called AZT Sucks. Dot com. And it's, it's, kind of a, <laughs> it's kind of a zany web, website name, you know, AZT sucks, but its, it's appeal is towards younger people, and, um, you know, it's kind of off the wall. And, and uh, where, do you know another website to go to for, for more normal There's, um, my age people? <laughs> we are living proof that come mm -hmm. and or, Rethinking AIDS. <laughs> and Rethinking AIDS mm -hmm. also. Yeah, very so. good. Yep. So... <laughs> thank, thank you very much and uh, really I admire you Lindsay um, at that age you come to the world and uh, Brent Lang said that very touching in his movie he came to this world and uh, the AIDS was, HIV AIDS was already there he never, has never known a world without HIV AIDS and uh, the same is true, and it is probably uh, difficult for us uh, adults to imagine how that uh, used to be.